If you have been laid off or recently experienced a sudden job loss, then I need you to hear me when I say that finding a job should not be your full-time job. I understand that that might sound crazy, but I'm gonna actually tell you what you should be doing instead that's going to get you back on your feet a lot quicker, so stick with me. The first step that you should do is gonna sound counterintuitive but it is absolutely so important. You have just experienced something traumatic and I know that you may not feel like you have the luxury of sitting around and feeling your feelings, but you really do need to take the time to actually grieve. Grieve the loss, grieve the end of this chapter. You may have been with this company for a really long time or maybe not, but either way, this is a traumatic event and you need to process all of the feelings that come along with that. The anger, the resentment, the sadness, the panic, the what the fuck am I gonna do kind of energy. I highly recommend that you take a day or two or if you can, a week to just process all of the emotions that come up and allow yourself to just take a beat. I know that the panic can set in when you've had the rug ripped out from under you and you really feel like I don't have the luxury to not do anything or to grieve or whatever because any day that I'm not working is a day that I'm not making money and I understand that struggle. I really do. I have been where you are. I have been in situations where I had $10 to my name and that $10 left me with a choice of I could either use that $10 to put gas in my car and go around town filling out applications and, or going to job interviews or I could use that $10 to buy me stuff to make sandwiches so that I can eat for the next two weeks. And I bet you can guess where that money went to. Yes, I absolutely put that money in my car so that I could go and find another job. I have been there, trust me. Hey there, Editing Lindsay here. Two things. I'm really sorry about the sound in the video. The microphone sucks. I won't be using it again. Bear with me. And number two, stay till the end of the video because I have a bunch of goodies for my ride or die people that stay till the very end and you don't want to miss out on them. So make sure you watch until the very end. All right, back to the video. The reason that I say this is the very first and most crucial step is that you really need to regulate your nervous system. You need to make sure that when a great opportunity presents itself or you get a job interview or you're out there applying for jobs that you're putting your best energy forward. You're not coming from a place of scarcity. I know the fear is real. Trust me, I am not diminishing your experience, but you have to understand that if you move from a frantic place or a place of scarcity, you are not going to serve yourself in the long run. So. Take some time to regulate your nervous system. And like I said, this may frustrate some people. This may sound counterintuitive, but you need to one, process your emotions, let them come as they go, let them grieve, let the anger out, the resentment, the sadness. And then you need to go and do something that's going to activate your playful energy. Your, your inner child needs a little bit of love. I know I'm getting a little woo woo here, but just stick with me. Go do something creative, go do something you enjoy, spend time with your friends, spend time with your family. Think of all the things that you couldn't do when you had that job. All of the time that you now have, you can allow yourself a little bit of that time to take really good care of yourself. When you do this, when you allow yourself to have some moments of joy or to go out and play or to be with your kids or to be with your friends or get support, it's going to boost your endorphins and it's also going to open up your mind to see possible solutions that you may not have been able to see through your survival screen. When we have something like this happen to us, when we lose our job or we have another major life event that causes us to kind of panic and, and ask ourselves like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? We get this scarcity screen, we get the survival screen, and it's really difficult to see past that. And so when you allow yourself to just take a break from processing this trauma and take a break from thinking about it and ruminating on it, it opens your mind to see solutions, ideas, or creative approaches 
to solve this problem that you may not have had access to in your worry mode. So really take this time to recalibrate, regulate your nervous system so that you can have a more calm, centered and strategic approach to your job search because that is what is going to be required of you moving forward. So the second most important thing that you can do for yourself during this time is to allow yourself some time to actually reflect. Ask yourself questions like, why did this job end? Was it clean cut? We just don't have the budget. We're doing mass layoffs because we're trying to save money and the company. Or was it something that was based on your performance? You really do need to decipher what the actual cause was and you have to be really fucking honest with yourself. And that is going to allow you to get some level of closure. You may not get the closure that you desire as to why this happened. I'll tell you two examples. I was let go once and I was given the opportunity to resign. I was not given an answer. I was not told why this was happening. I was literally just brought into the office one day and told that I would not have this job anymore. And they, those were the exact words that they used. We're giving you the opportunity to resign. And it took me a really long time to heal from that because I had all of the natural questions like, why the hell is this happening to me? Like, what did I do? I, I didn't do anything. They're not giving me any information. And so I had to kind of create my own closure around that. Another time that I was laid off actually most recently <laughs> was very clean. It was a clean break. It was strictly you know, we have budgetary concerns and we're eliminating a few positions, including yours. And for me, it was like, okay, that's just business. That's just the facts, ma'am. Like there was no need for additional closure and it was a clean break, which I was very thankful for because it didn't leave me wondering and needing that closure. Speaking of getting your own closure, I plan to do a video on how to create your own closure in different scenarios in your life. So leave me a comment and tell me if there's some area of your life that you feel like you're struggling to get closure on. And I will absolutely try to include that in the video. If you did get laid off or you got fired because of performance issues, here is the time that you're going to have to kill your ego and you're going to have to be radically honest with yourself. Could you have done better? Were you giving all of your effort or the required energy to complete your job to the satisfaction of your employer. If not, that's probably why you're here. And this is not to shame you and this is not to place blame. This is just to be an adult and say, okay, I probably, you know, maybe shouldn't have been late every other day or like I probably could have paid more attention to detail. I probably could have been a better colleague. You really just have to be honest with yourself because you can use this as feedback to get better. And that's what we're all about here is making sure that we are presenting ourselves to the world and to ourselves as the best version that we can. Something else that's really important for you to reflect on as you, and I really encourage you to journal this, like write it down. I'm a big proponent of journaling, but I really encourage you to write down all of the things that you hated about this job. Every single thing. Did you hate the culture? Did you have shitty management? Did you hate having to go into the office or the work hours? Did they have, you know, bullshit vacation hours? Like write down every single thing that you hated about this job. Was there a long commute? Did you not like the actual tasks that you were doing? And that's essential. Like if you didn't actually like the job itself that you were doing, that's something to kind of noodle on. On the flip side of that, you could also jot down all the things that you loved about the job. Did they have a flexible schedule? Were you working remotely or hybrid or in the office? And which do you prefer? Did you have great teams? Did you prefer to work alone? Did you have opportunities to collaborate? Did you have really good perks? Did they have a good vacation or PTO policy? Um, did you like what you were doing? Were you handling, you know, complex problems? Were you solving, you know, really cool things? Like what were you doing in the job that you loved? 
and what were the things that you loved about the job and you can go as far back as you want in your work history you don't have to just think about this most recent job you can go back as far as you like so that you can get a picture of what do i actually like to do what do i hate right so for me like working from home is yes queen right like i am never going back into the office you can like get on the bus with that because I'm, I'm just not like I like working from home I'm not doing the commuting thing like that's just not happening for me right so you can determine all the things that you love and hate about work to kind of come up with your criteria and I really encourage you to write this down because when you start your job search this can be helpful in determining what your job criteria is this will help you narrow down your search when you are looking for work you can also use this information in job interviews. You can ask about the culture. You can ask about what kind of perks, or you can even ask the people in your interview, why do they enjoy working there? What, you know, really keeps them there? What keeps them loyal to the company? And you can get a better idea of how you're going to fit in and really if you're going to be a good fit or if that company is going to be a good fit for you. So really take some time to kind of noodle on this. The other thing that's really important for you to journal on or to reflect on, especially when you're in a season of change and uncertainty and worried and like freaking out is to remind yourself and write them down all of the things that have gone right in your life all of the times where you've overcome an obstacle that you were like oh my god how am i going to get out of this situation but then you did right so think back of those times like man i really overcome some crazy shit, right like i <laughs> listen i have what i call my story inventory and because i'm a writer and i'm gonna digress so just stick with me I call it my story inventory and it's where I write down all of this crazy shit that I've been through in my life and the ways that I've overcome it or the great accomplishments or like exciting events that have happened in my life that feel like a fairy tale because there's like been some of those. And I look back at these, I'm like, okay, girl, we got this. We've been through tougher things, right? And I'm sure that a job loss is huge. That's a huge hit for anybody, whether you are a seasoned employee or whether it's your first job, like losing your work is a major hit. And so you're going to need those reminders of times that you have pushed through those obstacles. So please like do this, take this step, remind yourself of the wins that you've had, the times in your life where things went right, the obstacles that you've overcome. You're going to need to come back to this to kind of give yourself little boosts if your job search takes longer than you anticipate. Before I dive into the last few tips that I have, I just want to say that I'm so happy to be back. If you are new around here and you've watched the video this long, welcome to Truthitude. My name is Lindsay and I put out videos all about building women's self-confidence in all the different areas of our lives. So personal, professional, relationships, everything that we encounter as women that affects our self-esteem. So if you're new around here, thank you again for checking us out. I hope you subscribe and stick around. If you found any value in this video thus far, please give us a like because that really helps me push these videos out to more people that could benefit from the information in these videos. And it also helps us to build our little community. The next thing you need to do is make a list of your skills and your talents and don't be bashful. Make sure that you write down all of the skills that you have, maybe random ass skills that you've used in other jobs and you thought you'd never use again, things that you're really good at, right? So like I'm really good at organization. I've never had it as a job, but I've inserted that ability into every job I've ever had. Like I reorganize the supply closet. I reorganize the marketing collateral. Like I, <laughs> like I've just inserted that skill into every job and I, I've never like been paid for it. So think of skills that you're super good at or talents that you have or unique abilities and just have that list available to you and maybe start exploring some jobs around those different abilities and use this time to be curious and explore ideas that you maybe never thought of before 
jobs that maybe sound kind of left field, allow yourself to be open because here's the thing, you don't necessarily have to go back to what you were doing before. The beauty of this, and it is scary, I'm not dismissing that, but the beauty of this is it is an opportunity for you to start fresh. It doesn't matter how old you are or how seasoned you are or how new and green you are. This is an opportunity to reinvent yourself if you want to or to start a new venture if you want to. If you love what you've been doing and you wanna stay in that lane, girl, stay in that lane, it's all good. But just be open to the idea of something new. The next thing, you're gonna love this. I want you to write down eight to 10 ways that you could make money now. This could be anything. This doesn't have to be a forever job. It's just, yo, how can I get some quick cash? How can I make money now? This could be doing odd jobs for friends and neighbors. This could be babysitting, not my shtick, but do you boo? This could be, you know, small projects in your field of, you know, expertise for small businesses around town. You could, you know, DoorDash or Uber Eats or you could Uber if you wanted. I don't really recommend those because they're not like that lucrative or safe really for women. But you know, if you need some quick cash, it's there for you. Um, you could start some freelancing gigs. There's just a bunch of ways that you could make money out there. You could start an online, you know, digital products business. You just Google it, honestly, like Google some different streams of income that you could explore. Some can be passive, some can be active. Just make a list and brainstorm all the ways that you could make money. Can you get rid of a bunch of your clothes and upload them to places like Poshmark or ThreadUp? Just kind of get your creative juices flowing. I'm like, how can I make money now? And don't panic with this. Don't come from like a scarcity, like, oh my God, I gotta make money now. Just allow yourself to be creative. You don't actually have to act on any of these things. You can. You don't have to act on all of them. Maybe you'd pick one or two, or maybe you don't do any of them. But just think of some ways like, yo, I could really get rid of like half of my kids' toys and sell them on you know, Facebook Marketplace or whatever. There are ways that you can make money now. And when you do that, it's gonna give you a sense of empowerment that you do have more control over your income than you think. And also it's going to give you something to do in the meantime. The next thing that you should absolutely do and I think gets lost on a lot of people is to leverage your network. Do not self isolate. Make a list of people that you know. This could be professional, personal, family, neighbors, your community. A list of people you know that could offer you some kind of support. That doesn't have to be financial support. It could just be a listening ear. It could be, you know, some professional advice. It could be someone to look over your resume. It could be someone who, you know, needs a little bit of work done that you can offer, you know, and they could pay you for. It, it could just be a lot of different support. It might even just be like emotional and mental support. But make a list of people that you could turn to for support. You don't necessarily have to reach out to them, but I highly encourage you not to self-isolate. This was a mistake that I had made the first time that I was out of work, and it just kind of, it made the situation a lot worse, and I think it made the situation last a lot longer than it could have. Don't be afraid to ask for help and accept help. This was a big thing for me. This was a big lesson for me in my pride. I really had to learn to put my pride aside and to not like be afraid to ask for help or accept help. I will say though, be mindful of who you tell about your situation. There, I've seen so many posts where people just blast it out on the internet, like I've lost my job and woe is me and fuck that company and whatever. Like if that's your style, do you boo, but that's not gonna really get you any further. So just be mindful of who you tell. Make sure that the people you tell about your situation can help you move your situation forward. And I know that this might be like a little controversial, like why well, should just be open with everybody, but nobody needs to know your business. Like that's why you make a strategic list of people who can support you, but you don't need to tell everybody, right? Like 
even the people closest to you. It's none of their business. This is your personal life, your personal business. And if they can't offer solutions, then you don't really need to tell anybody. The very last thing that I'm going to touch on is how you spend your time. I highly encourage you to segment your time. So split your time up so that you're not one, making, looking for a job, your full-time job, as I said in the very beginning, like that should not be your full-time job is looking for work. You will burn yourself out. So yes, some portion of your time should be dedicated to moving your situation forward, looking for a new job, having interviews, filling out applications. Yes, absolutely dedicate time to that. You should also portion some of your time to doing the things that you couldn't when you had a full-time job spending time with your family, dedicating time to your hobbies or learning a new skill, going and doing things that you enjoy, right? Refilling your cup, especially if you felt drained from your job or you're, you know, recovering from the the pain of losing the job. Like you should just dedicate some portion of your time to refilling your cup, replenishing yourself nurturing your relationships with others and yourself. Do not skip this because let me tell you from experience, if you spend all of your time looking for a job 100% of the time, you are going to burn yourself out and you are not going to be in a good place when an opportunity does present itself. You are going to be so worn out, so rough and ragged that when you show up to an interview, your brain is gonna be absolutely fried. So you do not want to burn yourself out. That's why you need to kind of diversify how you spend your time. I know that the mindset, the panic can set in and it can be really easy to just blast resumes and spend all your time and you know applying to all the jobs. But when you come at it from a frantic place, you're gonna end up accepting less than you deserve out of scarcity and anything's better than nothing mentality. And that's not true. You could miss out on an even better opportunity because you're stuck in this shitty one just because you wanted to just take what you could get. So please like honor yourself and treat yourself better than that and allow yourself the space to really open yourself up to the next job that you truly want and truly deserve. The third segment of time, or the third thing that you should try to portion your time to is being in service to others. Now, this might be a little bit of a stretch or a little bit of a struggle for some of you, especially if it's fresh that you just lost your job. So that's why you give yourself a little bit of time to grieve and process and replenish yourself. But when you get to a place where you feel okay, dedicating some of your time to be in service of others is going to help you tremendously. One, it's going to place you in more spaces that might provide opportunities for you to work. It's going to enhance your network and you never know who people know, right? It's going to open you up and it's going to give you some nourishment to your soul because you're helping others and you're going to get some goodness back because of that. And also it's going to keep you a little bit busy and preoccupied so you're not just focused on this immediate problem that's trying to grab all of your attention and suck you dry. But being in service to others is going to benefit you in opening up your ability to see opportunities and to place yourself in spaces where opportunities exist that maybe you wouldn't have access to if you were just focused on yourself. This can also lead to opportunities for a little bit of paid work, you know, and also that could be, you know, reconnecting with people that you love, spending some time on, you know, phone calls and checking in on people that maybe you haven't connected with in a while. So definitely try to portion some of your time being in service or in connection to others. I'm really sorry if like me moving my hair is annoying on this microphone. I'm not in love with this microphone, but I'm trying it out because the quality without it was really terrible. The reason I spend so much time stressing like how you should spend your time is that it's easy to fall in one of two traps. The first trap being spending all your time looking for work and burning yourself out and doing application after application and churning out resume after resume and just like burning the candle at both ends. 
But the other trap you can fall into is completely losing all structure for your day and before you know it, a week or a month has gone by and you've literally just done nothing but watch TV all day and you have no idea like where the time has gone. So I really encourage you to be deliberate with your time and to diversify your time. If you need help with approaching the solution to finding a new job and you don't really know where to start or how to spend your time, then I have created something especially for the people who have been affected by a layoff. It is called Ditch the Hustle and Get Hired. It's a 30-day workbook and accelerated action plan that literally gives you step by step every single thing that you need to be doing every single day hour by hour not hour by hour like the whole day but it's like four to five hours of dedicated time to moving your situation forward it includes 11 plus templates eight plus worksheets and a day-to-day -day guide of how to spend your time and move your situation forward. Like I mentioned before in the video about resume templates, it includes a resume template, it includes a cover letter template, it includes follow-up email templates, it includes a make money now worksheet and a love it or hate it worksheet where you can decide like what you loved and you hated about your job and the make money now worksheet where you can jot down ideas of how to make some quick cash. So all of the things that I've talked about in this video, I packaged together in this accelerated action plan and you can get it. I'll leave it the link in the description box below. For my journaling friends, I also created a couple of journals. I'll, I'll leave a cute little screenshot or something. These are just blank journals that accompany the workbook. They're totally optional. You don't need it. It's just a blank, just a blank journal that I made. They're kind of cute. Um, but you can get those and I'll leave the link in the description box for those as well. I definitely want to be there to support you on this journey. Like I said, I have been where you are. I am in the trenches with you. For my ride or die folks that are staying till the end of this video, I decided to save a little bit of the chisme till the end, give you a little hot goss or, you know, spill the tea on what's been going on with my life. Um, it's been a long time since I've put up any content and it's been like over a year. So I'm sorry for that. Well, I'm not really that sorry. I am sorry if, you know, to my subscribers who rely on it and I appreciate you, but I'm not sorry for the time that I took away because I needed it. Um, I had mentioned in my previous life update video that I had gone back to work in the tech industry. Sippy time. Um, but... <laughs> I got laid off and so that really inspired me to create this video, create the you know action plan, ditch the hustle and get hired because everything that I was doing are strategies that I've been doing forever, templates, resumes, worksheets that I've actually been using forever to help me whenever I needed to move forward in my career. So that's kind of what happened with me was I, I got laid off and I just needed some time to myself to recalibrate and that job actually took a lot of time and energy which is why I had to step away from content creation and I did make the mistake of uh, releasing all my own clients from my own business which is what I had before and I went all in on this job and then I got laid off and so I've been spending my time looking for additional work rebuilding my business and coming back to the Truthitude tribe. So that's kind of what's been going on with me. I am resuming regular content. So I'm going to do every other week. That will be the cadence. And in between, I'll try to post like little reminders um, that the next video is coming out. But for all of my OGs, thank you so much for the messages, the comments. Thank you for checking in on me. Um, Zolsa the pup will make appearances in the videos as she likes. That's how she rolls. Um, but that's kind of what's been going on with me. So I want to try something new. At the end of every video, I'm going to be offering a book recommendation. I'm going to be offering some journal prompts. So the book that I want to recommend, especially poignant to those who have been laid off and are 
in their career transition is so good they can't ignore you by cal newport i will leave a link for you to grab that but it is absolutely a game changer especially if you're trying to level up in your career and while you don't have a job you have no excuse for time you know so you have the time to read the journal prompts that i want to leave you with are and i'll I'll put this in a screen so that you don't have to like write it down and scramble. I'll put it up on a screen so you can take a screenshot and maybe I'll put it in the description box below. I don't know, maybe. The journal prompts I will leave you with are, what is the best job you've ever had? And what is the worst? <laughs> Why were they the best? Why were they the worst? What does your dream job work day or work week look like? How are you spending your time? What are you doing? How much money do you make? What type of work are you doing? And the last question is, what is one way that you can take really good care of yourself today? So while you're looking for a job, your other job is to be taking the best care of you that you can. So that's it for the end of the video. And as always, stay true to the truthitude. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Second most, whoa, Tits McGee here.